In the previous episode, we ended up building an SR flip-flop out of two 6AU6 pentodes based on a multi-vibrator design that we found in the IBM 604 customer engineering manual. And it was really cool and it kind of struck a bit of inspiration in me to build a demonstration piece that I can leave on my desk. Because I think it would be awesome to have a vacuum tube one bit of memory display sitting on my desk that I could just push the button on and have the lights turn on whenever, uh, whenever I need a distraction from whatever it is I'm working on on the computer. So that's what I want to build today. but. Just sitting down and thinking about it a little bit, there's a lot of very interesting hurdles that we're going to have to overcome when we're moving it to a smaller form factor. And so, well, we'll tackle those problems as they come and we'll handle them one at a time. And I think it'll be a lot of fun and it, it should be an interesting, fun build, build that you guys can follow along with and maybe build at home with some random vacuum tubes that you have. So let's hop over to the bench and get building something. I've gone ahead and worked ahead a little bit, and all I've done is I've essentially rebuilt the SR flip-flop that we built in the previous episode on a much smaller breadboard. And it's actually laid out identically. We have two 56,000 ohm resistors. One goes to the output from the opposing tube, and the other one goes to uh, a negative 12 bias. And then we have a 32,000 ohm for our input from our button. Then we have a 10,000 ohm plate resistor and a 100 ohm screen grade resistor. And, and then for our display, we've got a little red and green LED with a, a 10 volt Zener diode and a, uh, and a resistor there to prevent the LEDs from burning out from the relatively high voltage that's coming out of the plate of these things. And, well, it, it should work, except that there's one major problem right off the bat, and that is that we don't have any way to power the heaters on these two tubes. So if you remember on our previous breadboard, we had three voltages that we were working with. We had uh, plus 24 volts, we had negative 12 volts, and then we had plus six volts for the heaters on these tubes, because that's what these tubes want. And, well, you'll notice that I don't have my little six volt uh, voltage regulator on here. And that's because I, I wanted to keep this as simple as possible. And so, well, how am I going to power the heaters in these tubes without a 6-volt regulator? Well, if we think about it, we have negative 12 volts on there, and the heaters don't care if the voltage is positive or negative. And since these are both 6AU6 tubes, the heaters have the same voltage and amperage requirements which means we, we could just run the heaters in series off of a 12 volt supply. That's, that's gonna be the easiest way to, to power our heaters. And that eliminates one power supply right there. We no longer need that six volts because we can use the negative 12 volt supply to power the heaters. All right, so let's take a look at how the power supplies are gonna be set up here. We have essentially two voltage rails here. On this rail, we have the positive and negative uh, rails for the 24 volt supply. And then you can see that we connect the negative rail of the 24 volt supply with the positive rail on this other side here. And this will be where our 12 volt supply comes from. Now, if we hook the positive of the 12 volt supply up to the negative of the 24 volt supply and then use that as a common ground for everything, the negative of the 12 volt supply will be negative 12 volts. So that's how we're getting our negative 12 volts. So in order to run the heaters off of that negative 12 volts, we just need to run from the negative supply into, the, into one heater, out of that heater to the next heater, and then out of that heater into the common ground, which is the plus supply here. So we'll just wire that up with some jumper wires here. The heaters are on pins three and four of each tube. So I'll just take this handful of jumper wires here and create a jumper uh, from one tube over to the other. Okay, so that should do it. We have, from our negative rail, we have negative 12 volts that goes into the heater of this tube. And then coming out of that should be negative six volts because there should be a six volt drop across that heater that runs into this tube. And then coming out of that, we go into the positive rail, which is our shared uh, ground. And well, that, that should work. So I'll tell you what, let's, let's hook up my, my power supply here. Now, my power supply already has the positive rail of the 12 volt supply wired into the 
negative rail of the 24 volt supply. So we don't actually need to hook that up here. So just run this over here and we'll see that this is, this is going to be the negative 12 volts there. And then we have the ground and plus 24 volts here. Now if I flip the switch, the heaters should start warming up. All right, well, we saw the green light turn off there. So that, that might mean that the tubes are warming up correctly. So our SR flip-flop should theoretically work. Let's push the button and find out. There we go. All right, so that works. Awesome. All right, so look at that. We, we've eliminated one supply right off the bat. And we've got a working SR flip-flop. So I could theoretically just put this on the desk and call it a day. But, well, there's a bigger problem. And when I say bigger, I mean literally bigger. So I've zoomed out a little bit, and this is the breadboard that we have our little SR flip-flop built on. And it would fit quite nicely on my desk. But... Let's just take a look right over here. That monstrosity that I'm actually having a hard time fitting in the frame is the power supply that I'm using to power it. It's, it's huge and obviously I can't have that sitting on my desk for a cool little demo piece. And so, well, let's actually take a look at why it is so huge. And you can actually see it's relatively simple inside. It's, it's really just two different power supplies, one to give 24 volts and one to give 12 volts. And then that just runs over to my terminals over here that I power my breadboards with. And this 24 volt supply is so large because it can drive up to 15 amps. And that's huge and important for what we're going to be doing in the future where we're driving a lot of tubes. And the negative bias doesn't actually need that much because there shouldn't really be any current flowing through the negative bias. So this is just a little 12 volt wall wart that I took apart and mounted inside of the, the box here. Well, this is massive overkill for what we want to do with our little desktop SR flip-flop demo. So we could probably get away with just eliminating this altogether and just running two little wall warts like this. This is a 12 volt wall wart and this is a 24 volt wall wart. And I got these for about $6 a piece on Amazon. So I'll tell you what, let's plug these into the SR flip-flop and see how they work. All right, we'll start with the 24 volt supply here and these supplies actually came with these really cool uh, terminals that you can screw wires into so that makes it really easy to hook up to my breadboard here and this is the the 24 volt supply so we'll, we'll hook that into the the negative and the positive here and then on the 12 volt supply over here again we'll uh, we'll do the same thing we'll hook it into the positive and the negative over here. And with this jumper wire over here, that takes the positive of our, our 12 volt supply and hooks it up to the negative of our 24 volt supply. So that should give us our negative 12 volts. So let's, uh, let's plug these in and well, see what happens. See if we let the magic smoke out here. All right, so our power supplies are plugged in and the tubes are warming up. All right, the green light went off, so hopefully that means that the SR flip-flop is working. Let's push the button and find out. Awesome. All right, check that out. That means it, it works. Our, our dual wall wart is getting the job done. This is awesome. We could build a uh, cleaner way to plug these into here and, and have, have this sitting on our desk, and that would be, that would be awesome, right? Well, well, you know, this takes up as much if not more space than the actual SR flip-flop and I, I don't like that I have to use two wall warts for this so well we're not quite job done yet I would really like to get this down to just one 24 volt wall wart eliminate that 12 volt wall wart altogether 
But if I have just one wall wart, it doesn't give me negative voltage. So how am I gonna get that negative bias supply to make sure that my flip-flop here keeps working as it's supposed to? Well, I, okay, so this is a bit beyond my knowledge base. So I, I think I need to consult with an expert. That's right, my expert was Google. But Google delivered, as it usually does, and we came across a pretty interesting way of generating negative voltage from only a single positive voltage supply. And they did it with a 555 timer and this really simple uh, two capacitor, two diode arrangement. And the 555 timer generates a square wave. Essentially, it's an oscillator. Now, I, I don't want to use a 555 timer, but, you know, I think we can build an oscillator out of vacuum tubes, and then we can use that oscillator with this capacitor diode arrangement to generate our negative bias voltage and eliminate an entire wall wart. Granted, we do have to use more tubes, but, well, more tubes is certainly cooler than more wall warts, so I'll tell you what, let's... Let's see if we can't figure out how to build an oscillator. So the SR flip-flop that we built was based on a multi-vibrator design. And if we look at the IBM documentation where I got that design from, it turns out that they actually also have a variation of that multi-vibrator design that generates a almost square waveform. And so if we could build this, that could, that could just work. Now they show it using triodes here, but you know we've seen that the pentodes can operate just as well as the triodes. So let's give this a shot. It looks like a fairly simple circuit to set up. So here I have my breadboard out and we've got our two 6AU6 pentodes here. And I've got uh, just the basics set up right now. I've got a 10,000 ohm resistor into the plate. Uh, and a 100 ohm resistor to the screen grid. Uh, and then we've got the suppressor grid and the cathode tied to ground. And I've got these little blue wires set up as our output uh, out of the plate. And well, that's it. That's all I have set up now. But it, it looked like a fairly uh, simple circuit to set up. So we'll start with the grid resistors. And the, the grid resistors, we're gonna run a fairly large resistor on this. So we'll pull those to ground with a 100,000 ohm resistor. And then it looks like coming out of the output of one tube, we go through a small capacitor into the grid of the other tube. And then we do the same vice versa. And so, well, I, I have these little small capacitors, so we'll, we'll chuck those in. So coming out of the output of both of these tubes, we go through our small little capacitors here. And then I need to connect this capacitor up to the grid over here. So we'll just take a little jumper wire for that. Connect that up to the grid here. And then out of the output of this capacitor, I need to connect it up to the grid over here. So we'll take this long piece here and run it around. It's kind of a tight fit, but I think we managed to get it to work here. And well, that that should work. Now for the, the purpose of testing this, I'm, I'm gonna test it with uh, 24 volts here. And well, really that's all we need because we don't have a negative 12 volt bias. And I'll be using my little uh, six volt regulator here because this is for testing and I just want to make sure that we got everything just right. So we'll, we'll be getting the six volt for the heaters from this and then we'll just run 24 volts into here. And I think we can actually do that with one of the wall warts that we had earlier. So I've got my 24 volt wall wart here and we'll, we'll just go ahead and plug the positive in and the negative in and then we'll plug it in and off we go. Uh, except that, now that I think about it, there's no way for us to actually see if this is doing what it's supposed to do. And, uh, and I think an LED wouldn't help because it would be flashing way too quickly. Hmm. Well, I, I guess this means that we need to get out the oscilloscope. Okay, we've got the oscilloscope out. The tubes are warmed up and powered up, so they should be oscillating. And so. 
We'll hook up the negative into the negative here of our oscilloscope probe. And then if I probe on the output before the capacitor, we should be able to see a waveform show up here. Let's give that a shot. And look at that, we do. We actually get, well, kind of a strange looking waveform. Well, it's not, it's not actually that strange. It, it, it shares the same basic shape as the waveform that we saw in the IBM manual, but it's, well, it's not that fantastic. The voltage scale that I met here is 10 volts per division. So it goes from about uh, eight, eight or so volts on the low to 24 volts on the high, but it's this kind of midsection here that I'm, I'm not super happy with. We get a nice drop off. So I'm not sure if this will work all that well. I mean, it should work, but well, there's a lot of aspects about this that I'm not super happy with. The fact that we're using two full tubes and that we're getting this kind of filthy, weird waveform that comes out of it. it. It may not actually work all that well to create the negative voltage. So I think it's time that we consult the expert one more time and see if there's a different way to make an oscillator out of a vacuum tube. So after some digging around, I came across these variations of the Hartley oscillator. And I think that's gonna work well for us because it only uses a single vacuum tube. And it also looks relatively easy to make. We just need some inductors, some capacitors, and a resistor. And so I've gone ahead and flipped the breadboard around here. And on the back side here, we've got uh, the setup for a vacuum tube to come in here. And I've got a 10,000 ohm plate resistor and a 100 ohm uh, screen grid resistor. And then the output is gonna be this little blue wire. And our cathode and suppressor grid are tied together with this orange wire. So let's go ahead and build this up and see, see if we can get it to work. And so uh, we'll work our way from the grid out. And so you can see that we have a 10,000 ohm resistor coming off of the grid. And we also have a capacitor that is parallel to that 10,000 ohm resistor. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And then on the other side of this uh, 10,000 ohm resistor and uh, capacitor, we have uh, one inductor. And that inductor uh, actually goes back to the cathode. And since the cathode is tied together with the suppressor grid, we can just go back to this little orange piece here, with this, uh, this little green inductor that I'm putting in. Okay, and then that midpoint of the inductor also goes through another inductor to ground. And so we'll go ahead and put another inductor to ground here. And then the final piece of the puzzle is that uh, we have an extra capacitor that goes uh, from the end of the grid resistor all the way to ground. And so just put that little capacitor in here. And well, I, I think that's it. Let's plug a vacuum tube in. Let's hook up our 24 volt wall wart here. Plug that in. Now the tube should be warming up. And if we take our little oscilloscope probe, we'll connect up the ground to ground again. And we hook it into this little blue wire here. We should see some waveform show up there. Let's see what happens here. All right, so this is, this is on a five volt scale here. So we're getting a really pretty wave from uh, essentially 10 volts to 20 volts. That's a really nice wave. You know, I think that we could use that with the two capacitor, two diode setup to generate some negative voltage. That's really cool. I'm really excited about that. And if we compare that to the, the waveform of the previous 
setup, it's it's drastically different. Actually, if we look at, at even the frequencies, we can see that that the Hartley oscillator is oscillating at about 500 kilohertz. That's that's a crazy fast oscillation, but that should work really well for what we're trying to do. That's that's cool. All right, well let's I tell you let's let's hook up those capacitors and those, those diodes and and see what happens. So we'll disconnect this first. Tell you what, we'll, we'll reset you because I'm going to use this as a makeshift voltmeter to test our voltage here. So the first step to create our negative voltage is that we need uh, one capacitor coming off of the input. Just hook that one up there. Then coming out of the back of that capacitor, we have essentially two diodes. One of those diodes goes to ground. The other diode goes out this way and hits a second capacitor. And that second capacitor goes to ground. And then that, well, that should be creating negative voltage. So let's hook our oscilloscope probe up here and see. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Wow, okay, it's, it's generating more and more negative voltage. So this is a five volt scale, so we've got five, 10, we're almost at to negative 15 volts. That's awesome. Now, if we put a load on this, that amount of negative voltage that it's creating should drop down because we, we've got a load going into it. But I mean, that's, that's super cool. Oh, that's really exciting. We were able to make negative voltage out of our six AU6 here. This, that's amazing. All right, well, so obviously the next step is to figure out if the negative voltage from this will power the SR flip-flop that we built earlier. So let's, let's give that a shot. It's gonna look a little janky because I'm gonna run some jumper wires, but let, let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, so it looks a little wild because I've got these extra wires running along here. And I actually had to run these, these orange wires, these orange and black wires here, because the heaters could no longer run on 12 volts because we don't have our 12 volt supply anymore. So I pulled out my big supply for now and we're just running that through our little six volt converter here. Uh, and that'll be powering our heaters here. And we'll, we'll try to think of something to do with the heaters a little later, but for now I just wanna see if this works. And then I have the 24 volts that comes through uh, this rail here is, is going over to our main rail here through these two wires here. And then our 12 volts is this little green wire here. This is our negative 12 volts that should supply our negative bias. So, well, let's, let's, let's flip the switch on. And we can see both LEDs are illuminated now and, and that's because the tubes are still warming up. And once the tubes are warm, we should see one of the LEDs turn off. Okay, that's interesting. Both of the LEDs turned off. Hmm, I wasn't quite expecting that. Let's, uh, let's push a button and see what happens. Okay, that, that lights the red LED up, but it immediately turns off. Let's push this one. That lights the green one, but it, it immediately turns off. All right, let's take, a, let's take a look at our negative voltage and see what happens. Because remember, I said if we put a load on it that the amount of negative voltage should decrease. So let's see what it's down to. So we can see that it, we're down to about seven volts, negative seven volts. And if you remember, I had two 56,000 ohm resistors here and that was based on negative 12 volts. Well, now we have less negative voltage, so we need to change the balance of those two resistors. So I think instead of having a 56,000 ohm resistor to our negative supply, we need to drop that down so we have a stronger negative supply coming into the, the grid to bias it. So I think uh, what I'll do is I'll pull these 56,000 ohm resistors out and, and put in some 33,000 ohms. Now it's a, it's a bit of a tight fit, so I'm gonna do it with uh, these, these needle nose pliers here. Pull you out and then we'll put some 33,000 ohm resistors in their, in their place. And we'll see, that, that should give us a stronger negative voltage on the grid to bias it. All right, well you can see that by changing that 33,000 ohm resistor, we actually, 
dropped down the amount of negative voltage that we're creating. Now we only have about negative six volts. But if you see our green LED is on, so maybe that means that our flip-flop is working with negative six volts as our bias. Look at that, the red LED turned on and stayed on. Now if I push the button, all right, awesome. The green LED turned on and stayed on. So this is, this is mental. So what we have going on here is we have an SR flip-flop that is using a Hartley oscillator and a capacitor diode configuration to generate negative six volts to be the negative bias and it works. It's insane. I can't believe that works. That's so, I'm so happy. I'm so excited about that. That's really cool. So, so what this means is that we can, we can knock it all down to a single 24 volt wall wart, right? Well, not quite. There's, there's a new problem now that has arisen. And well, if you remember, I said I have to run these heaters off of my little uh, converter here because, well, now I have three tubes and I don't have a, tw a strong 12 volt supply to run the heaters on. And oh, man, so I need to think of some way now to power the heaters of all three of these tubes off of just a single 24 volt supply. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm super happy with the way that this is working. I'm, I, we've, we've got something really unique that we've started to build here. And if we just hammer out a few more kinks, I think we'll have uh, one of the coolest uh, little display pieces that we can put on our desk. So I'm going to do some more thinking about this while I continue to play with my little SR flip-flop here. And uh, in the next episode, we'll hopefully come up with some pretty inventive solutions to handle this. I mean, we came up with a pretty inventive solution for our negative 12 volts, so uh, anything's possible, right?